Hi, everyone. Um, good evening, everyone. Okay, there's Intercausal. So, welcome Hi. and Intercausal. I'm handing over to you. Looking wow. slightly stressed. Yes, yo. Ah, guys, technical difficulties today on another level. I can breathe. At least I'm online. Everyone can hear me. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we do apologize for the technical difficulties. We tried to avoid them. However, it was unavoidable. But we are here today. Thank you so much for joining us and for your patience. I would just like to welcome you all to another episode of the UK's at Ends College of Agriculture, Engineering and Science webinar series where we meet our graduates. Please remember to switch off your mic as we have a discussion, then switch your view to speaker view to be able to see who's speaking at the time. And then you are welcome to post any questions in the chat. However, we will have a question and answer session towards the end. Joining us today is Dr. Sanele Kamete. He's a strategic youth life and career coach, a best-selling author of two books, an educational motivational speaker, an employability practitioner, the founder of Make a Mark Africa Youth Development and a nonprofit organization. He's also a radio personality, a lecturer at Varsity College and KZN Community Education and Training. He's also the founder and CEO of Ilata Holdings, a personal development and training company. Uh, that's currently based in Durban. Sanele is passionate about youth skills development, education, and academic success. This passion for, for education, educational speaking, and career coaching comes from his own personal experiences, where the lack of a mentor and career guidance meant uh -huh. he failed his first attempt at metric and went back to do it twice. But Sanele, being self driven and hardworking, uh, uh, being a hardworking person, he believes yeah. it's possible because it's all doable. So today we'll have Sanele join us as we discuss the dynamics of parenting in academia, which I think is a topic that touches most people. So without any further ado, Sanele, may you please come on the screen and unmute yourself and just greet our audience. Um, good afternoon. Uh, it's good evening, um, Dogozo. Uh, sadly, um, and our beautiful uh, uh, and lovely audience. Um, it is a special day and thank you so much for uh, having me, uh, uh, hosting me for this important discussion. I hope I'm audible enough uh, for our audience. Dr. Sanele, you're muted. So suddenly, yes, I wish to know how old you are. I know, I know we chatted, but we didn't get to how to chat as to how old you are. So many achievements. <laughs> I see that you were reading an old um, profile, <laughs> which is which is nice that you were reading an old profile. Uh, I'm turning thirty three uh, on the twenty eighth of December. So now everyone. Uh, here has to buy me a gift. I can see that <laughs> <laughs> we are almost uh, 40. So, and thank you so much for being late because um, we are able to have almost 40 people joining while we're waiting for you. So I'm expecting uh, <laughs> almost 40 presents. So I'm, I'm getting 33 this year. Okay, no, uh, no, you such for a young man, you, you've achieved quite a lot. I mean, your, your profile speaks to itself and you're also a doctor, which is not an easy flight. 
So um, I, I think people who are joining us now, they want to know who is the Sunny, this young doctor who's done so much, who's doing so much and continuing doing, like you're a lecturer, you have an NPO, you have a family. <laughs> who is Sunny? So um, thanks. So um, basically, uh, Sanele Kamete, um, he's um, a life and a career coach. So I do um, youth life coaching and career coaching. Uh, I'm a father, as you have indicated, a husband, and um, I'm a lecturer. Uh, I did a media, so I lecture media and journalism. And um, Sanele is an author of uh, four published books. And Sanele is a public speaker as well. And he always engages uh, using uh, his work and through his work using the media as well. So basically, Sanele is, is that uh, young uh, man who used to sell uh, airtime at the University of Kwazulu-Natal uh, back in the days. Uh, when I was doing my first year up until I think uh, third year. So I'm that guy if um, some they recognize uh, the face, but find it difficult to actually uh, <laughs> recognize it because um, it's been quite a while. And um, I can see uh, in our midst we have my wife as well, who decided to just join uh, uh, <laughs> separately, uh, not next to me. She said um, she can't smile, so <laughs> she will have to mute and mute the video so and allow me to be alone in this small screen. Uh, you, want, you don't want to share the platform. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did try. I did try. Uh, she said she's very expensive uh, to speak. Uh, she doesn't speak for free. She has just shared a video. Yeah, <laughs> she just right now she could just say son. hi, hello, <laughs> and the new baby. Hiya. Uh, and the new baby. <laughs> Guys, yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, to our audience, I'm sure right now you're wondering why. Okay, anyone can speak on parenting. Anyone could have been a parent. Uh, the reason why we 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 chose Sanele, Dr. Sanele Gamede is because not only has he been a parent uh, in while he was still pursuing his studies, he has also managed to complete his degrees and has worked on different accolades besides being a parent. So I think his experience being a student because he's a UK as a ten alumni, he went through the processes. He was at res. He got married. He had a baby. He had studies. He still had to find. He still had DP to stress about. He still had supervisors to worry about, and he still had parenting. I think uh, we would be doing a disservice to our audience if we didn't include an aspect of looking at parenting, because in the past we've looked at um, how to network and related topics. But I think this one is also very important because we need to know what is it that it means to be a parent in academia? Uh, what are the disadvantages? What are the real challenges? And how can we survive that should we find ourselves in those situations? So uh, I just want to find out from you, Sanele, since uh, you've been, uh, like this has been your life. I think this topic is, it describes your life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe what was, what, what, were, what were the biggest challenges that you had being a parent, pursuing your degree, and staying in, on campus. So let's say from the moment you find out, I'm gonna be a father, what came through your mind? What, where, what were the biggest challenges that you faced? Um, thanks, Douglas. So basically I became a parent uh, in 2014. 
uh, after getting married, uh, heiress, I will say, we got married at, at, at the University of Wazunatal, Howard College, and Bath. Um, our marriage was very cheap. Uh, it was 75 friends. Uh, I think it's still 75 friends even today. So it was very cheap, um, but the marriage uh, ceremony was a little bit expensive, which came a little bit later. So basically, uh, we, we got married there while I was doing my final year. Uh, I remember it was the 30th of May. Uh, I had four days before my June exams. Uh, and I was 23 to 24, my wife was 20 to 21 uh, at the time. So we were very young, um, but we decided this is a good thing. And we're coming from a background uh, where the whole thing of staying together, uh, it is not al allowed uh, via the religion and our culture as well. It doesn't allow it. So it was and uh, necessary for us to ensure that we we get married. So we get married at Dress. Uh, we decide at one of the residences called T. Willie, uh, Tony Williams at Howard College. And one of the difficulties uh, was that we, I don't think we realized that uh, uh, getting married will would be followed by having a baby. Um, and we were not ready because I remember the following year, my wife started her first year as well uh, at Howard College, which means um, when she fell pregnant towards the end of 2013, uh, which was around October, because she gave birth uh, in June the following year, 2014, which she actually um, had her pregnancy, what, what, what do you call this thing when you are due? Uh, while she was writing her exam. So she wrote all her exams while she she was like two and she had to, to go. And on the last day of her exam, uh, she had to go for labor. So she was in labor pains the entire four exams. So the, the issue was finances where was one of the biggest challenge. And uh, beside finances, uh, we didn't realize that UKZN will kick us out of rest <laughs> uh, <laughs> because uh, married people are not allowed uh, to stay together. Number two, you're not allowed to have a baby uh, at rest. So immediately when we brought our, our daughter uh, at, at, uh, at uh, Tower, uh, Albert Lutuli um, residence, uh, some will, will relate we were kicked out. We were told it is not allowed. So now we had to taste life. We had to find a, a, a place to stay. We had to take our daughter, Spesanele, uh, to our mom, which uh, she's 450 to 500 kilometers away from here. So we started to buy a toilet paper. We had to, now we started to know how it feels to actually buy a toilet paper because we had to find a place and we quickly found a place in Chesterville where we stayed. So those were some of the challenges. And of course, the starting part while we are parents was also a, a challenge as well. Okay. Uh, okay, that's interesting. I, I honestly didn't know those policies, but it's good to know you can't have a baby address. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think because I think the I, the notion is because babies are a lot of work and they cry, they're unpredictable. So yes. what if they cry is too much for the next person in the next room? Yeah. They, and, they and, and that facility is for studying, uh, basically. You are not allowed okay. to start a family. And the rest that I was in, uh, even sharing was not allowed. So squatting was not allowed. As much as she was now registered 2014, but still, she was still regarded as a squatter. And luckily, uh, I became uh, the rest assistant, which means I got um, a bigger room and you know, I was able to squatter, even though it wasn't allowed. 
Okay, we're not gonna get into things that might get us into legal troubles. Uh, okay, okay. How now? How you are final year students? You expecting a baby? Your wife is writing the first first year final exams. Um, I remember my first year; it was horrible. I think I failed like sixty percent of my modules or something. <laughs> But I'm here, I finished my degree, thank God. But it was so difficult without having the added pressure of now I have to look for a place, of now I have another mouth to feed, uh, now I have to pay for uh, accommodation. How, do you, how did you manage balancing academia and this, these new uh, financial costs that you had not budgeted for? I, I think uh, one of the things that uh, was a drive for me was the fact that uh, I was laughed at. Uh, I was told I'm going to fail. Uh, I was told even by my, my parents that uh, this is nonsense, that, uh, that the whole notion of trying to get married at a very young age. So that became a drive to try and prove uh, to everyone that I can make this thing work. And I've made uh, my, my marriage work. Today we are uh, we were celebrating our eighth uh, anniversary. This year we are 15 years in a relationship. Uh, so this is like a high school sweetheart kind of energy. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so so uh, that, that was mostly uh, one of the things that was driving me. And also, uh, I couldn't come back at home and say, I have failed because they had already told me that this is messed up. You can't be trying to do all things together because it's one of the things that I always encourage uh, to many young people. Don't try to mix a lot of things. I was called a take of all trades. I remember I recruited you uh, to selling Justine. Uh, products uh, and men selling cosmetics. So it was one of those things that kept me going financially. I started to uh, run a, a, a business, which again, it got me into trouble as well because uh, running a tax shop at Res was not allowed. And I had even a name outside the door of the tax shop. It was called Guangkukuzia Kalelana, which I was remember. not allowed. <laughs> Which, which was not even allowed. And I remember Mr. Lula, the head of housing at the time, came to shut down my shop. And I was like, you know what? Uh, by the way, I'm not selling anything illegal here. And I'm serving a lot of people who buy condoms at 2 a.m. in the morning. So I'm serving a lot of young people here. And fortunately, uh, he gave me a job as an RA because he was so inspired by that journey as well. So those are some of the things. And of course, I think it's very important that when you find yourself in the situation where you now have a time to try and find a support structure and start with friends from uh, tertiary who are going to be your support structure. Uh, don't try to hide the whole baby thing uh, we, sometimes us as males, sometimes we try to walk as if nothing has happened. And then you dogozos are going to just see because you are the one who are carrying the baby and we, you are the one who nurses the baby when it is there. So try to, 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 to try not to hide it and try to embrace the fact that uh, you are having the baby and you are still studying. I always say it's possible, it's doable, uh, only because I managed to do it, which means you can do it. But I'm not trying to push you to having a baby, getting married at while you are still doing your first, your first degree, because that was my first degree. I did my first honors, my second honors, my master's, and my PhD, and it wasn't easy. I don't want to lie. I had to work like three jobs uh, since um, uh, I worked for the university when I was first year, second semester. I worked at the Sneedon Theater ever since then. And then I had to work like as a tutor, as an RA, uh, as a mentor. Uh, and I had to work at Westville Prison 
uh, teaching there. So I had like four jobs while I'm doing my master, my 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 degrees, all my degrees. And uh, 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 I don't want to lie, I was blessed. I never wrote a sub in my life. I don't know what is right. Ah, yo, suddenly, how did you achieve that? <laughs> <laughs> no sub, a baby. No sub. There. Right. I've never, Everything. yes. Four jobs. Yes, I've never failed in my life. I can even publicly share my academic record. The only thing that I'm not proud of in my academic record is the fact that I didn't pass in flight with flying colors. Of course, I had so many things going on, but I've never failed and I've always passed in record time. Even my PhD, I think it was almost done in two and a half years. And the PhD was done. It's just that I was um, interviewing celebrities. So they took their time allowing me to, to, to interview them. So I have always pushed in record time, but uh, you need to embrace the fact that uh, this is who you are. Now you have this child, especially if this child is probably not staying with you or you know you, you now have to work because there is that reality that you need to work. So try and make sure that your, your time management is up to the game and you always uh, use the consultation hours that lecturers uh, put on their or on their door, try to engage with friends, uh, try to help people who are supporting you while you are busy with this journey. And trust me, if we were able to do it with Mrs. Kamed, uh, you guys can do it. Okay. Um, <laughs> can, not you are supposed to, guys. If, if you can wait until you finish your degree, then do that. If, if, okay, now you have to baby before your degree, then I, 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 um, then you can, you can follow Sanele's advice in terms of how to survive now. Um, maybe like uh, one question before we open the floor to the audience. What, what advice would you have given to yourself? Uh, you, your younger self say before you even got married, because you you said by the time you got married, you didn't realize that a baby is a possibility. And it's a lot of there's, work. Yeah, you know. So there's someone who's out there who's still saying, Ish, I can still have relations. I'm not gonna get a baby potentially. Um, or I can get married, is, is not thinking about the baby aspect. They're just thinking about the beauty of the relationship, uh, the togetherness, and not thinking, okay, if we are together, a baby is a possibility. And once the baby is there, what advice it, would you give to yourself before you even got to a point where you were sort of cornered? Yeah, um, I see, Dogozo, that you you want the audience to to hate me because uh, what I'm <laughs> going to say as an advice to myself might come a little bit harsh uh, to someone who is watching and listening uh, uh, to these. Um, and I still uh, want them to buy my books. So, <laughs> but nonetheless, nonetheless, my sister, what I was going to say to myself, and I love the fact that you said, uh, say it to yourself, not to anyone here, uh, what I would have said to myself, suddenly, don't get into uh, um, be intentional about being in a relationship, be intentional about being at school, be intentional about almost everything that you are doing. Uh, remember, I was studying, uh, I was a father and a, a husband, uh, I was running my, my, my business, uh, my personal development and training. Uh, company while I was still running my shop, uh, selling snacks, selling a time on campus and all of that. So I would have said, uh, be intentional about what you are doing. Most people, they get into relationships, not even knowing what they are doing, which leads to the topic that you are, we are now uh, unfortunately talking about, which is parenting in academia. We do understand that uh, there are people who have studied and finished and came back to continue and now their parents. And some they start their first years while they're married. So we wouldn't have a problem speaking about parenting 
uh, in academia, but we are, I am stressing the fact that you don't have to get yourself into uh, relationships when you don't have to be intentional about it. What I mean is that uh, when you are in a relationship, you need to know why you are in a relationship and all the possibilities that comes with being in a relationship, which includes having a baby. Because in most cases, and I love the fact that we are adults here, so I'm not going to sugarcoat some of the things. In most cases, uh, when you start dating, you then start being engaged sexually. And once you start engaged sexually, our mind will always lie to us and say, I will use a condom. Uh, and trust me, I'm not trying to be explicit. Uh, I think it's very necessary. Uh, we used it with uh, my wife. And we felt like, you know what, we are now used to each other. Uh, I mean, what could happen? And then boom, a, a baby. And some uh, culturally, they are not allowed to uh, use um, these pills that you guys are using or uh, the, the injections that you, you use, uh, concentrated septives uh, before they get married. So, so you end up getting uh, pregnant because you are afraid of using these uh, 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 from hospitals because you thinking it will spoil your fertility and stuff like that. So make sure that you get into relationships knowing what you are doing. And again, the issue of being intentional about what you are doing also comes to the issue of education. Let us take our education very serious as much as we want to take Oh. Uh, uh, well. uh, unfortunately is uh, didn't mute uh, himself uh, so so I think um, it's it's those are the some of the things that I would have said I would have said to myself pose a little bit Sanele, uh, don't rush like what my dad said uh, but of course, we we were like, you know what, let's do this and we know what we are doing. And uh, advice is very important. Seeking advice, I, I don't want to lie, uh, guys. We started enjoying, and when we say enjoying, where you don't have much of problems in, in your marriage, when we were five years in marriage, and can you imagine, um, and we're not like fighting and all of that. Yes, that happens, but... Uh, we were studying. I remember that we had to, after we were kicked out of rest, we had to find a place at Chester B, which means now we had to start renting. Uh, and then USA is now here, our daughter. We had to exchange swap her when I'm, uh, when I'm coming with the municipality bus. Uh, I will um, find my wife waiting for me uh, at, at the waiting room. Uh, so that she can give the baby to me while she takes the same bus going back to campus so that she can study and so that she can also work as well at the theater where I was working. And she will come back late. Sometimes she will cross night. And luckily I had an office when I was doing my master's where she will also cross night in that office at UKZN. So it is it was very challenging. So we didn't really enjoy and we were kicked out from one flat to the next. And there was a time where we stayed uh, in, a, in a car garage. And I remember my mom coming for my master's graduation and she cried tears, finding us living in a car garage and finding the fridge empty, yet it is on. And she, she was very devastated. So what I'm trying to say is the, the issue of parenting in academia is very important and that we teach you how to, to sustain yourself, but we are more or less promoting that if you, it is possible for you to wait a little bit, focus on your studies, please try to do that. And also, once you find yourself in that situation, try to negotiate the situation with all parents. Uh, try to man up, try to, uh, to be a grown up, uh, even though you are not married with Osanele, now you find yourself having a baby. Try and sit down the two families. They will understand. They have to understand so that you don't waste, uh, I don't want to use the word, waste your life. 
but you don't find yourself uh, now having three years that she has missed while when you are finishing your degree. So try to negotiate that so that you can both live your life, try to catch up while you find yourself in this situation. Mm. Yo, Yazi, thank you so much for this. Yeah, uh, I think it's it's one of those things that are unspoken of, but they're okay all around us. Because you always see one pregnant lady or the other, whether in June or in November. Mm. That's when when the chakarandas fall, that's when you see the tummies. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you so much for that. Because really, we always talk about one side, academia, academia. But then now, if you are a parent in your academia, how do you balance? I think yeah. now I'll open up the the floor and allow our audience to just, if they have any questions, if they can raise their hands or if they are brave, they can come on the screen and ask the questions to Sanele directly or myself, or if they have any comments or want to share any of the experiences, anyone is welcome. Hi guys, uh, it's Sanele here, the one that mistakenly opened the video. Ah, you can open your video now, we want to see you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, all right. All right. I thought Hi it, guys, I thought it, it was um, the Majola Majola that, um, I thought it was the Majola that I stayed with at Res. Sorry, Sanele. I had a Sanele Machola who we stayed <laughs> with at Res as well. Okay, I'm all right. <laughs> all right. I am Sanele Machola from Manchester University of Technology. Now. Okay. Welcome. So, yeah, I'm currently doing my interview. Yeah. So the question I have for you, Mr. Kamete, uh, is that uh, how, how do you? Uh, in, in something of it is personal experience. How do, how how do you how do you fully commit yourself with a person that has a child with another person? Uh, like, mm. uh, I I answer it. Yeah, he's asking. Yeah. Uh, um, for those who for those who couldn't hear, Sanele Majola from Mangusutu University of Technology, wanted to know from Dr. Sanele Kamete, how do you commit yourself to someone who has a child by another person? It could be that he joined us late <laughs> because Sanele actually married his high school sweethearts and then had a baby with her. No, 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 it's, it's a good question. I know that uh, I'm not a subject expert, uh, in in that because I don't have a child outside. But uh, thanks, Sanele, for, for asking. I've lived enough and I've mentored and, and I do coaching. So I do come across such uh, incidences. But of course, uh, someone is more than welcome to put um, their comments on the chat platform as well. Um, I think it, it goes back to the issue, uh, Sanele, of being intentional about what you are doing. If you have found this person having um, this baby uh, with someone else, uh, which I suppose, you, 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 you probably have been attracted to this person uh, by something. And for me, I will think uh, you probably have to capitalize on the fact that you have seen these good qualities from this person, uh, despite the fact that uh, uh, she or he has someone, he has a, a child outside your relationship. But if it happens that it, it happens while you are in the relationship with that person, it means um, this person uh, doesn't uh, feel or doesn't still want to be in the relationship. It's just that maybe there are benefits that this person uh, or let me use Untogozo. Untogozo is benefiting for some reason uh, of being with me, uh, but 
uh, Dozo doesn't like me anymore and doesn't love me anymore because she's um, brave enough to have someone else while we are in a relationship. So I think you just need to toughen up uh, on that part and accept uh, those truth the way they are. And I still on that topic of love and all of that, may we not, and I repeat, may we stop falling in love. There is nothing called falling in love. People decide to love. They don't fall in love. I once spoke to a client uh, and I said to, 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 to her, uh, can you stand um, on, uh, on top of the chair? And she did. And I said, can you fall? Can you just let your body and fall? She was like, suddenly I'm going to be hurt. Uh, and I was like, that's exactly why people are hurting. That's why people are so hurt in relationships because they fell in love. You don't fall in love. You decide to love and also. And when you decide, there is a reason why you are loving and also. And love doesn't, it shouldn't have to have emotions and they shouldn't be financial gain. They shouldn't be a condition. Love should be just you stand alone. I don't know, Dozo, if I'm, I'm sorry, Sanele, if I'm answering your question. Yes, uh, I heard you clearly. So an, another question is that, uh, ha, uh, okay, so uh, I, 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 I've been following you, you see, I've been following uh, you and the work that you've done it's like uh, even if even in your in your funeral in, in, in your funeral that was happening in your home, you are still managed to to mentor the student. How how did you find your your patience? Because I also uh, I also once be uh, once uh, I was once a, a secretary for a university resident, and students they were using my good heart like to do whatever they want they know ah if you go to Sanel, you'll be held like i was dealing with files and also i was dealing with uh, student issues so uh, I, I opened the door of giving them uh, of giving them medication so the, uh, most of the time they didn't want to buy themselves medicate the medication they know ah we have our doctor Sanel, will be always there uh, and and that medicine was costing uh, was costing and uh, at school, I was being shouted uh, for giving them medicine, uh, this medicine, because it was maple in of which they were strong. Uh, some of them, they, it helped them uh, regarding so their period pain, some of them with headaches, and some of them. Uh, so, yeah. Sorry, so, Sanel Majola, please, can you uh, please ask wrap your the question. question? Yes. Because right. we have a few All more right. questions lined up. All right. I, how to do find the passion? Oh, okay. Um, uh, I think the the issue of passion. Uh, I I saw that you wanted to also speak about how do I ensure that people don't uh, take advantage of me. Uh, I think that one is easy. You you just need to set boundaries, and boundaries is not being selfish. Uh, set boundaries, being able to say no. But the, the issue of passion, I think it comes from this thing that bends you within when you think about, uh, uh, and you know, there's something that you can do even when you are not paid. I started mentoring people and coaching people without getting paid. And today I speak for uh, 25 to 30,000 rand to go and speak for an hour. Uh, but I've spoken for, uh, eight good years without uh, uh, getting paid such an amount. So the, the passion is this one thing that you feel like, you know what, I am really loving this and I can do it even if I am not paid, even if there's no one who's watching me. Um, I don't know, I saw uh, a sister was- Okay, there yes, was, we, was we a have team. a few more questions. Uh, I would like Sane Lezuma to please come on screen and unmute yourself. He is it was one a pinky of, face. 
There was a pinky first. There was a pinky first. Oh, okay. Pinky Hillman, please come on screen and unmute yourself. Good, good evening, colleagues. Good evening, Dr. Damete. Good evening, Togozo. Um, my question is, um, how do you deal with the issue of guilt, considering I'm a single parent, and the time I have to take away in terms of not spending that amount of time with my child because of my studies and my family. Uh, you know, I'll make an example. I went to two funerals this year and I had to do a specific check to determine whether I go to those funerals because I don't have enough time. Full-time mom, full-time job, master's student. It's, yeah. And I have so much guilt. Um, I just need to understand, you know, from other parents, in the platform as well, um, the nature and how it's affected them and how do we deal with this, especially for our children because it's last time that we can't get back. Thank yeah. you. And they grow so fast. Thank <laughs> you so much for that question, Pinky. Uh, please answer that, Dr. Sasanele commented, and then we'll take two um, more questions. Yes, um, and there are questions on the chat platform as well. Yes. Um, sis my sister, I, I think it's a reality that you can't shy away. Uh, I think a clear communication with your, 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 your children, with your family. I have missed um, funerals at home. I remember there was, my brother was in a fatal accident uh, and I didn't go to the funeral. Um, uh, you need to be very clear, not forcefully, but you need to communicate very clearly issues of finance if uh, that's the problem, issues of what you are currently doing. Uh, I think it's, it's very important that we, the people around us know what we are doing. But at the same time, uh, uh, this is Pinky, I think it's very also important that you set some time. And setting some time sometimes is not necessarily a dedicating that Saturday that I will go with my daughter uh, to the beach. Sometimes it is taking uh, your daughter with you while you are doing whatever that you are doing. Uh, why I think I posted a picture uh, of them in my office recently um, while I was busy revamping CVs for clients here. They were busy playing in my uh, office. There's a big couch. So sometimes I take them through with me while I'm busy and they can enjoy the fact that they can distract me from time to time. But we also communicate that, hey guys, uh, can you give me some space? Sometimes uh, the reality is, uh, says Pinky, you need to put some extra time. Sometimes I'll leave anyone uh, to go to bed, including my, my wife. I have to kiss her. I'm married to her. So which means we have to do adult stuff. Sometimes I will do those other stuff with her. And then while she's probably asleep, sneak up and put four hours uh, and come back at four o'clock in the morning uh, uh, because I need to sort of accommodate them. I hope uh, that answers your question. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for that, Sanele. And Pinky, please go, go, go on. Uh, please don't stop. All the best for your masters. Uh, let's take another question from Sanele Zuma. So many Sanelas today. Is it because it's Dr. Sanele? <laughs> uh, please come on screen. And, and we really have to go on screen. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. You don't have to. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thanks, man. Thanks, Mavis. Um, I, I just wanted to commend you on being present, on being a father. Um, Father Oak is very close to me. And um, uh, I think it was in 2018 where Stats SA was releasing a report informing us that in South Africa, about 70% of black kids have absent fathers. So to see a very young man, black, who's that passionate and very intentional about being there for, for the kids. Uh, is something highly commendable because we, we're raising a generation of angry boys with a lot of personal issues simply because of neglect. So I don't think we can take it lightly that you are present in your very, very hectic, busy schedule, but to be a father and to be there 
I just wanted to thank you for that. That was just my comment. Thanks. Okay, before you leave us, Sanele, uh, just maybe to take this opportunity to share uh, what student support, the student supports units, at least for the College of Agriculture, Engineering and Sciences, is currently doing to sort of support or assist students uh, that are currently um, parents. I remember, uh, I think it was in 2020, before COVID, there was a support group not sure if it still exists. Yeah, yeah, it was a student mother's um, group. It has been very successful. Can I just shout, send a shout out to Shelly, uh, our manager, she's around. Uh, do you mind Shelly jumping in here? Uh, yeah, thank you, Sanele. Um, and, and thank you for this very interesting topic. Yes, we, have a, we had a, a successful student mother's support group. Um, and um, it was, yeah, it was very important to have that space for student mothers to share their views. Sadly, we tried to have a, a student father support group um, that was um, going to be run by Mzamo Zondi. But we, we, although people had said that they wanted to um, to come and 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 do this, they um, they 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 didn't. When we actually advertised it, nobody nobody came. So that was quite sad that we because we we were really hoping that we would be able to have both a student mother and a student father's support group. But um, we are always there to help and support as best we can. So if people find themselves in a difficult situation, please feel free to consult with us. Um, we have student support in all the different colleges. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. That was uh, Shelley Bansley and Sunny Lezuma from the Student Support Units. I think it's, it's important for students, current students, to know that there is, there is support, there is help. Maybe when Sanele was going through these processes uh, around 2014, they hadn't been established. That's why he went through so much. However, there is support now, not to say go get a baby, but when you have it, I think maybe let's address the question from Ntobe Gozwane uh, that actually speaks to what we're talking about now. So she says, Good afternoon and special greetings to Dr. Sane, Dr. Kamete. My question is, how can you emphasize the importance of taking responsibility should a mistake of someone falling pregnant? How, as a man, can you ensure that you do away with the stigma as a man that you also look after your own child since others associated with females? Oh. Um, I think it, it, there is the issue of dealing with the stigma uh, goes or aligns with uh, your, your the self identity. Uh, I think owning up uh, to what has happened also makes you realize that you can't beat yourself uh, all the time regarding what. Uh, have happened. So it, it also makes you want to man up and, and pick the responsibility part. So can you please uh, you, you repeat the, the last part, if I can, uh, I, um, okay, how as men can you ensure that you do away with the stigma? Yeah, I think it's manning up and the issue of responsibility uh, also is uh, a matter of communicating i know when when you talk to people when uh, you say communicate they feel like ah, Sanele, it's just everyone um saying communicate communicate but uh, the key here is communicating um some people they talk they don't communicate which probably is another topic for another day the issue of how do i communicate with my partner because there's a difference between talking to your partner and communicating uh, uh, to your partner. Um, sometimes the issue of responsibility, uh, some people don't own up to that because, uh, you know, as, as partners, we don't communicate clearly uh, with one another with love. And even if love is not there anymore, because some they just uh, leave uh, uh, and decide to sort of like 
for separate ways, but we still need to be adults and talk about this. I don't know if um no dogs um uh sorry no dogs I'm answering the question. I think it's it sums it up. Uh, I want to get to this one in particular uh, by Amashe Mwilase. She says, hi, Do Mr. Kamede, I mean, she, I'm happy they joined late. Hi, Kamede, I'm at, I'm a Westville third year student and I had a baby earlier this year in February, right at the beginning of the semester. And mm -hmm. it has been so hard for me academically. I just wanted to ask, how do I or make or how do I explain or make my mom understand that my degree will take a bit longer? I'm so scared to even go back home. Um, did Amashe say she hasn't even went back home? It okay. seems like she had the baby in February. She, she gave birth and hasn't gotten and hasn't went back home. Okay, she's a third um, year student. I, I remember, I remember uh, that as well. I was laughing with my colleagues uh, uh, yesterday when I told them I didn't invite my parents uh, to my um, wedding uh, because I knew they, they didn't approve anyway. Uh, and it was horrible. I remember when we had to introduce our daughter and the marriage, it was tense. But I even had, I, I even had like- uh, You started bolding. <laughs> yes, yes, I had like uh, uh, pimples, if I may call it like that for a, a, a lack of a better word, uh, on my head, the way I was so stressed. Um, but it was something that had to be done. Mm -hmm. I think the more you, you take so much time uh, to let this thing out, it is going to affect many parts of your life, including your academic, including raising the child as well. So um, your, your mom uh, is not going to understand Amashe. I want you to go to your mom knowing that she might not understand. And don't go there trying to make her understand. Go there apologize, uh, being apologetic about what had transpired and uh, reassure her of the, the mistake, if it was a mistake um, that you have realized that has led you to this point in time where you now have a baby and sincerely go and apologize. If needs be, find a relative that you can uh, have with you to accompany you uh, to speak to your mom. We, we have different parents. My father is like your, um, uh, he hits even today. So you don't just go to, to my father and be like, hey, uh, I think uh, there is someone who's pregnant and all of that. So, so you can ask an, an, an aunt uh, or a cousin or whosoever to help you go. And when you go there, man up uh, and try to tell them uh, what has transpired and the consequences and reassure your mom that you are going to work 10 times hard because you have seen what has happened. And I, I do feel like Amashe, uh, probably her mom is paying for the degree and now she has to make mom understand that, hey mom, you have to cough a little bit more because even the, the, the husband that I found at university doesn't have probably much to pay for the degree that you were paying, which becomes a little bit tricky. That's why I'm saying, if needs be, find someone who can sit down with you to help you with that situation before you go to mom. Because most cases, or in most cases, we just batch our parents and be like, mom, I'm pregnant. Or wait until mom recognizes that you are pregnant. So find technical ways of doing it than killing our parents. Some parents have died because of us when we come and be like, boom, mom, I'm pregnant. And they have heart attack and they are gone. So be careful with that. Oh, thanks for sending like, if, uh, Thank you so much for everything. And to Amashe, if you're still with us, uh, 
I would advise that since you're still a student, you're still eligible to get counseling from our student support services. So whichever college you are from, there is a student support services division that is available to you. So maybe book a session and maybe have a, a sit down chat with the counselor and, and plan out everything. And just like Dr. Sanele just said, you need to have that at the back of your mind that you may not be forgiven. Uh, you may not be accepted. You may be thrown out. So you must have a plan B for every plan A. So I, I suggest you go to student counseling, reach out and yeah, your solution is there. And then Andy Swachibangu, I'm just going to answer this one. They asked, they said, hello, Dr. Kamete, how did you and your wife reach an agreement regarding splitting responsibilities of taking care of your daughter since you were both studying? Both your studies were important. Was the parenting responsibility shared? In less than a minute, Dr. Kamete, <laughs> you can respond. <laughs> is kicking me out of here. Um, unfortunately, uh, there was no negotiation in this. It was a responsibility. So I, I want us to kick out in our mind the issue of negotiating the responsibility. Uh, it is a responsibility. But of course, uh, we had to understand each other. Uh, in, in my one minute that I've been given, I think uh, the most important thing, guys, is also reminding each other that, hey, baby, do we still love each other? Whenever there are disputes, whenever you are going through whatsoever, hey, baby, do we still love each other? When he or she says, yes, okay, let's deal with the issue and not deal with each other. If, if we still love each other, let's deal with this issue. There is an issue at hand. What do we do about it? The key is you guys still love each other. So treat each other like love bodies and then solve the problems. The issue with us, sometimes we deal with, the, 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 we deal with ourselves instead of dealing with the issue at hand. Make sure that, uh, I, I, I know that sometimes you get so angry that you wish to sort of like shout and, you know, and sometimes it happens by mistake, but remind yourself to deal with the issue, not with each other. Okay, now that brings us to the end of our show. Uh, thank you so much to everyone that has joined us. Dr. Sanele, before we close, if people still wanna reach out, they want to get more of your guidance and they want to know how to finish their degrees, uh, please share with us where to find you, how to get in touch with you. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know if you still hear me, uh, Dogozo. Yes, we still hear you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Dogozo, and the team uh, behind this lovely work for inviting me. And thank you so much for everyone who is here. Uh, I, I could feel and I can see that people are still interested in uh, having this engagement. And I saw even my friends, uh, they are here. It's so lovely uh, to have this engagement. I wish we can carry on uh, having this engagement. Um, I've shared my website on the chat platform. If you can quickly go there, it's www.sanelekamede.com. Uh, if you go there, you'll find more of my resources. If you go to the shop, uh, the online shop is very safe. You can buy my coaching programs, my vision board, online courses, uh, and many other online courses that are there uh, uh, and books that I've uh, written. There's a very important book on finishing your qualification in record time, uh, which is my second book. It is also available there um, on social media. I am Kamete Sanel in most platforms. So let's, let's stay in touch, let's connect. And, um, and you can always WhatsApp me or call me on the 07280690929 number that I've shared on the chat platform as well, where you could just um, book a session with me uh, and then we talk 
uh, especially we are towards the end of the year, we need to do vision boards for next year. We need to plan our lives uh, for next year. And for mentorship and coaching, uh, there is free mentorship and there is also paid mentorship. Free, I do it through Emeka Mark Africa Youth Development, which is an organization that is in, uh, uh, we launched the organization recently in Kenya. So we are in six or seven countries now. So that's free. And then the paid one is for individuals where I see you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So thank you so much, guys. I love you uh, so much and thanks for turning up. Thank you, Dr. Sane Lekamete. And thank you to everyone that has joined us. We will send a video link recording of this event so you can go over whatever thing you may have missed. And we'll share Dr. Sanele's contact details so that you can get in touch. And for those who are still current students at the University of KwaZulu Natal, if you feel like you any you under any pressure and there's something you need guidance in, there is the student counseling department or division. Just reach out to your college and find out how you can get into contact with your counselors. Don't suffer alone, please. There's no need. And good evening. I mean, enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye. Thank you.